Good afternoon from Anna Smith and Paul Hand and a very warm welcome tennis fans to final Sunday of the Cinch Wheelchair Tennis Championships from the Queen's Club West London, one of the most popular and longest running ATP Tour events supported by the best players in the men's game. Queen's signifying the opening of the short grass season for the world's best wheelchair players, crescendoing at Wimbledon the third slam of the season. We're focusing on the men's wheelchair singles final on court one, followed by the doubles final as well. Today, Great Britain's Alfie Hewitt and Gordon Reid target the singles and doubles title sweep. And in today's wheelchair singles final top seed, Alfie Hewitt squares off with Belgium's defending champion at the net there. And second seed, Joachim Gerrard, the British number one, beat his doubles player Gordon Reid. 6-3, 6-1 in Saturday's All-British semi-final here at Queen's. And in yesterday's second semi-final, the world number four, Gerard was uh, clinical against France's former world number one, Stéphane Houdet, returning to the men's singles final after easing past last year's runner-up, 6-1, 6-1. So this one, a very intriguing British-Belgian world top four clash between two former world number ones and both former champions here this upcoming final gets interesting is their head-to-head -head series. Alfie Hewitt comes into this 33rd career meeting, leading 18-14. He's won the last three tussles with Big Joe. And Joe has won all three grass encounters. He's never lost to Alfie on the grass. Alfie Hewitt won the toss. Uh, formalities underdone by today's umpire, Scotty Moore. Yeah, so their last grass match was here in last year's semi final. Joe squeaked past on that occasion. So, confirmation of this one upcoming. Alfie Hewitt, the top seed from Great Britain, takes on the second seed from Belgium, Joachim Gerrard, in our British grass court wheelchair men's final promises a lot. It was a very close encounter, their match here in the last four. Joachim Gerrard squeaked past 6-7, 6-2, 6-2 in two and a half hours. So the world number two, Alfie Hewitt, today attempts to avenge that loss. Two in the world. He was crestfallen after his French Open final loss to Tokita Oda. 17-year-old Japanese left-hander who brought so much to the final at Roland Garros. It just uh, hammered Alfie off the court, frankly. It was a really watchable match, but Alfie was simply outgunned on the day. So, uh, with the retirement of Shingo Kunieda, another standout Japanese already at the pinnacle of the men's wheelchair game, and so young as well. Joachim Gerard. Well, dropped just four games to get here. He's four in the world. Reigning and defending Queen's champion is Joachim. He's here with his coach, Damien Martingay. He's constant in his camp. He looks very, very assured, as he has done all weekend so far. Hitting the ball beautifully. Big, imposing game that he has. And uh, you're in the company of Paul Hand and Anna Smith. And Anna, it should be. Absolute belter this one. If we base it off the match last year as well, wasn't it? Two and a half hours, an epic contest. So if we're treated to a match of that quality again, I think everyone's going to be happy. But I definitely think the onus is on Alfie Hewitt here. He's got to try and find a way. And you would have thought grass might be a surface that he could do it on, but he's just seemed to have struggled against Gerard. He's so strong and he's such a brute of a guy isn't he he's got the big serve and we've seen time and time again the returns as well he's able to take them so early and he just possesses a game that really suits this surface yeah he does but uh, Hewitt his opponent today the 2019 champion at the Queen's Club said in post-match interview yesterday I think I'm still learning at the moment I've only played three matches on the grass this year but I'm enjoying it and I feel like I'm in a good place physically Looking forward to a good challenge, said Alfie. Gerard, one of the strongest players on grass because of his big serve and his long levers. I've got to serve well and do what I can on the returns and be a little bit creative on all, th all three. 
So, well, Alfie's uh, scuttling and scampering intensity and his ability to defend his court be enough to keep the big Belgian brute at bay today. Scotty Moore in the chair, we mentioned that before. It's a lovely, beautiful sun-kissed scene here in West London. Temperatures uh, up to 30 degrees, but it feels hotter around these parts because, of course, this is suburbia and there's not an awful lot of breeze whistling through the venue. Minimal wind speeds locally, just 11 miles an hour south southwesterly. So, very, very warm feeling as we came into the venue today, and that'll be sort of exaggerated down on these glorious courts that have stands all around them. And that's actually a talking point in itself, isn't it? Who Two minutes. The heat favours Anna. Well, I think I think it's going to be tough for both players. So when we walked into the venue, we we sort of had a conversation, yeah, didn't we, about just how minutes. much the temperature feels like it's hotter today. It's really quite an oppressive heat. It doesn't feel like there's much wind, so there's not really getting any any sort of coolness at all. So it's just going to be about a lot of how they've prepared as well. They've got to make sure they feel well, hydrated well, and you know I think both players are going to really want to try and shorten the points. I don't think they're wanting get into too many extended rallies out here. The toss and chose to serve. There we are, so it's Alfie who's uh, won the toss and elected to serve. He's taken the tougher of the two ends as well. He's sort of staring into that sun, which as we know, as the sun descends very slowly throughout the afternoon, it gets a little trickier to watch the ball on your ball toss, but he's experienced, he's played here over the years a lot, as has big Joachim Gerrard as well. So but this one all set up to be one a, minute. an absolute eye-catching title decider in West London in today's showpiece. Well, what's up for grabs? The winner will walk away with uh, 2,346 US dollars to be precise. Runner-up, 1.1 thousand US dollars as well. But of course, more importantly, it's all about generating confidence to go into the third slam of the year, isn't it? Wimbledon, in a couple of weeks' time for these two. Everybody's got the headwear on sensibly. Good to see. Very, very hot out there. And hopefully taking on lots of fluids as well. So it's a gorgeous British summer's day for this men's chair singles final. We're pretty much ready to roar. Even some shade for the umpire as well. Much needed. If their previous encounters is anything to go by, two and a half hours worth. People still uh, spilling in to catch a glimpse of these two wheelchair stars, a top five clash in the rankings. So confirmation of this one, then Alfie Hugh at the top seed in the men's wheelchair singles event takes on Joachim Gerard second seed. Both so frugal in passage here. Alfie has dropped five games. Maybe as if Abassi. 6-1-6 love. Then his uh, doubles partner. Gordon Reed 6-1-6-3 for Gerard. Oh, a good uh, opening win over Dermot Bailey. 1-1. One and one. And the same scoreline against Stefan Houdet, his doubles partner. Both these guys will be in action in doubles following this match as well. Percent. Alfie Hewitt to serve. It's going to be Alfie Hewitt to get this men's wheelchair singles final underway. Ready. Play. Fifteen line. Sparkling start from the British number one. Oh, it's gonna make one last push to pocket the spoils. Thirty line.
lad. Second, sir. Well, statistically, the area that we've noted, Anna, over the Gerard matches, that he's just so dangerous when he's returning. Opponent second serves. Rolls in, likes to take it early. Well, that was terrific. Fun. Alfie Hewitt, nice depth. Plenty of spin on 40 it. 40 low. I think for both players, though, first serve percentage is going to be key, isn't it? They've both shown how dominant they can be behind that first delivery and how good they are on that ball three. You don't want to give either player a look at too many second serve returns, especially the big Belgian. Let's first serve. opening game for Alfie Hewitt. He's on the board in the blink of an eye. You feel good about his start there. So what is it about Joachim Gerrard that he just doesn't like playing on a grass court, do you think, Anna? Can you put your finger on it? Zero and three against the Belgian is Alfie. I think you just got to look at the, the conditions. The ball's a little bit quicker. It goes through the court quicker as well. It just plays more to his strengths, doesn't it? He's able to dictate a lot more of the points and as we've seen over the past couple of days, it's not just the forehand, it's the backhand that's able to yeah, cause damage as well. Sorry. He's got the slice, he's got the serve, he's got the return, and it just sort of plays into his hands, doesn't it, the surface? Fifteen Prime example there of the serve, he's able to find the spots, and it's just always gaining pace, sliding away from Hewitt. Love. Well, they first met on the grass back in 2016 at Wimbledon seven years ago. That was in the quarterfinals there. Joachim Gerard blasting his way through. Six love, six four. More recently. 40 love. In, uh, 2021 yeah, at Wimbledon. Again, quarterfinals. And Gerard came through. Six three in the third set. Much closer. Alfie, a more established player then couple of years ago. Oh, it's a lovely change up and a back behind as well from Alfie Hewitt. Very, very alert there tactically. 40, 15. And of course, 2021, where Big Joe got his second win over Alfie Hewitt. It was the year that he won the championships at Wimbledon. A main slam winner. Huge moment for him. I can remember his celebration. And then their last match here. Last year. Semi finals. Two hours and 30 minutes. It was a belter. 6 2 in the third. Game Gerard. Well, Gerard holds emphatically as well. This time to 15. So it's very soon. One game on. Passages of play out here on one. As anticipated, who can land some early return blows? Is the question on his lips. What was interesting was how well Alfie Hewitt dealt with the Gordon Reed left handed serve yesterday. He really took those wide angles away from Gordon nicely with his uh, return positioning. Here he is then at the tough of the two ends serving. Great point there from Hewitt. But it was a really aggressive second serve, wasn't it? I think that's. Something maybe love. he's actively looking to do compared to yesterday, be a lot more aggressive with the serve, maybe go a little bit closer to the lines. He 
realise that this is not accurate. He wasn't getting punished yesterday by Gordon Reed, was he? He wasn't going after the return, but it's going to be completely the opposite case here against Gerard. Certainly a little uh, blustier today with the wind. Yeah, they really took that, didn't it? You could just see as it was going through the air, it sort of just kept veering towards the tram lines and just, unfortunately for Alfie Hewitt, just went into the trams. rally of the match so far that one these two have played some punchy tennis it's a short sharp so far nice to have an extended round but the heavy undercut slice of Gerard that just knifes through this dry grass court it's had plenty of uh, match exposure Feeling the heat a little, Alfie Hewitt. First double fault from him, and it hands over a couple of breakpoint opportunities then for the imposing Belgian who loves a fast surface. Alarm bells ringing. Oh, he's at Game it again. Gerard. Just so standout in that Gerard return leads service. Two games to one. He gets the early lift and wheels towards his bench with a heady 2-1 lead in this opening set of this men's wheelchair singles final. Well, either Joachim Gerrard here as the defending 2022 champion Hewitt, the 2019 champion, will become the first two-time World Genesis champion at the Queen's Club. And at the moment, this man darting out of the blocks really quickly. He's got a very assured, purposeful look about him, hasn't he, the way that he plays his uh, match tennis on a grass court these days, as Gerard. I just always really like his demeanor. He's got such a calm and collected presence about him on the court. He's just got that steely Sorry. determination and you can just see that he is, he is such a presence. And in these opening couple of exchanges, you really see him just already asserting his authority on this match. And it's gonna be up to Alfie Hewitt to see what he's gonna be able to do. But he does seem to have the bigger game out here, Gerard. It's just whether he's gonna be able to keep it up for the whole match. number four then a break of serve to the good 2-1 serving <laughs> top edge of the forehand love 15 now, interesting to see how it to that because that would make many players that little bit edgy. All club players can really relate to that can't they? We've all done it. Somehow makes him a little bit more humane. the right Fifth choice as well. We've seen him go to that pattern and play in his opening service game. Couldn't quite clear the net that time though, Alfie. <laughs> Just a 
return of intent there from the world number two. Oh, and an even better return off the backhand wing as well. 15 and 30. Trying to get himself fired up, isn't he? he? Just needs to get some of that adrenaline going. A few more returns like that will really do the trick. That's one of his calling cards, isn't it? It's intensity rattling the chair around at high speeds, knocking around all over the place. You in? Oh, he's done it again. 15, 40. Winner off the forehand this time, and he's fist pumping. Funny how sometimes it just takes one point, isn't it, to get that adrenaline going to get that physicality and intensity and all of a sudden in these last couple of points Alfie Hewitt looks a different player and length from the Alfie Hewitt forehand. He roars back and squares the match. Two a great serve off. of his own. Wonderful ball striking from the world number two. Just what the doctor ordered. A lot more purpose about him in that game, wasn't there? Looked to take on a lot more of the second serves, try to be aggressive and be the one dictating the rallies as well. And you do feel as if that's just a tactic that he's got to go for the whole match. It's it's tough when <laughs> Gerard is making you move, especially in these hot conditions. Stunning serve. 15 love. Anna, to you, is he getting just a little bit more pop off that frame? Slightly bigger than the, the little black frame that he used to use? I think so, do you? Yeah, I think so. You always want a racket that's going to give you as much help as possible, but I do think you're right. He just seems to be able to throw the racket a little bit quicker, getting a bit more pace off the ball. Yeah, nothing worse than when you're playing a big, powerful player like today's opponent and you've not got enough to keep him off you. I feel like you're being smothered by a 15 top duvet. That racket will really help, though. <coughs> Oh, he's dictating nicely, getting the first strike in and staying on top of the rally, Alfie Hewitt. 30 love. Opening up the court as well a bit better, isn't he? You just see here, just getting more width, finding that space, and I think it might have been a thumbs up from Gerard as well. So good at breaking the sidelines with his rally ball. Love. Done well here. Shown a lot of confidence and mental skills from one two down, a break of serve to draw level and now get on top. Possibly. Many thought he and as indeed he did, thought he might have found the edge of the line with that. I don't think the umpire's going to overrule that far sideline. Oh, 10 out of 10 from Joachim Gerard. Maybe 40, too late as far as this game is concerned, but that was an absolute beauty off the back end.
Dan Hewitt. Back to back games for the British number one. Hewitt leads three games to two. He's in the ascendancy here. With a fine service hole to 15. Fascinating story. I was driven today by one of the championship car drivers and a retired gentleman who was telling me a lovely story. He said, you know, I, I like the wheelchair tennis. And he said, all oh, right, yeah. He said, uh, he said I had to take um, Joachim Gerard to King's Cross um, to, to catch the, the, the Eurostar back to Brussels. And he was saying, he was saying we, we, we picked him up at 10 to 5. He had to be there at 5.30. He said, well, it was 10 past five, something crazy. They're really up against the time wise. He arrived at 5.30, got all the bags out of the car with his coach, and they went speeding down the down the road in, you know, in his chair towards the Eurostar. And the, the guy announced, you know, sorry, too late, you missed it. So the driver, John, lovely old fellow, just recently retired, he said, I said to my wife, who was in the car as well, you stay here, watch the time. Car, King's Cross heaving with people. And he went and he spoke to the supervisor and said, look, this guy's just won the Queen's wheelchair event. Can you let him on? And they did. They held the, the, the train momentarily. And Joachim Jarrett got on the train. And back he goes to Brussels in delight. So just a, a lovely moment there. John said, I just was really calm, talking to the supervisor, nothing too irate. And it worked for me. So they face the same issues that we, we do, these guys, these, these top stars. Lovely. Those are the parts of the job that aren't quite as fun, is it? Running for those flights or running for those trains. We've all been there with a tennis bag and a massive suitcase and just dripping in sweat. It's, uh, it's not all glam, yeah, is it? No, absolutely not. And these guys pay a, a heavy price. I mean, they all work very, very hard physically as well. Oh, wonderful from Alfie Hewitt, who himself, prior to the Australian Open, did a big training phase. Love Cody. in the gym three to four times a day. And of course, it's not like an able-bodied player where you can put a lot of the load onto the legs. Alfie's all arms. So he was doing band work all the time, throwing the weights around. He said, I was absolutely knackered getting into bed at the end of the day. Looking well here. Super response from Joachim Gerrard. Love 30 down. Lovely. 15 opening wide backhand angle there. That was very brave. He's got easy, nonchalant, smooth, effortless power, this man. Broad shouldered and burly. Loaded with muscle. When you get down and see him courtside, as we've done on a regular basis, Anna, it's something to behold, isn't it? He is, he is a unit. What? Uh. 15, uh, 40. Quite does it justice and the sound of the the pop off the racket on the serve and again you just see how much of a presence he is when he's rolling forward for that return he's he's a big guy like you said and he's got such a wingspan on him as well there's not really many s spaces to get past and when he hits a ball it stays hit doesn't it? It does. Two more break points here for the world number two. Game to it. Alfie Hewitt breaks again, and it's a trio. Hewitt leads four games, games to right two now for the world number two. He is absolutely flying. He's elevated his level from being one-two down to this, uh, you know, crazy tempo that he's playing at right now. And the thing is, yes, Joachim Gerrard is strong. But he's heavy as well. It's a lot to carry, isn't it? Alfie's light, agile. Serving them in the dominant position here. Love You're absolutely right there, Paul, about the, 
the whole him being heavier than Alfie as well. It's, it's all well and good if you're the one that's controlling the points and you're not having to move and cover the court. But as soon as the tables have turned and he's having to try and get that heavy frame around the court, it's, it's not quite as easy, especially on the grass. It's not as easy for these guys to move, get the chair around the court. Love 30. Sort of lack of height on the contact point compared to an able bodied server, the serve is less imposing in wheelchair tennis, naturally. <laughs> Gerard looking threatening here at Love 30, gets to look at a second serve as well. looking at Gerard's position as well when he's uh, he's getting ready to hit the serve he's already moving in before he's even almost thrown the ball up if you just take a look especially on the second serve you just see how far inside the court it's almost like he's just got a short ball that he's leaning into you can hear the wind on our on court effects Mike blowing very hard what's happened here any idea Anna some sort of thing. The gentleman, the physio, has been called to the court. Hurt his finger. I'm not sure whether he's cut his finger or got it stuck in the chair or. In the wheel rim, maybe. Yeah. It's, it's pretty painful if that's the case. It does look to be like he's in pain. Well, he's obviously dropped that racket immediately, which is an indicator. I've not seen this from Big Joe before. Well, the trainer will be called. And of course in wheelchair tennis there's sometimes sort of running repairs done to the mechanics of the chair. Sometimes people get players get blowouts. You certainly know it when they do. It's quite a loud pop. Or uh, somebody's seat becomes slightly loose, needs to be tightened up. So there's normally somebody to hand on site to uh, make those adjustments. Normally a team of, of mechanics. But I've not seen this before. He looks a little bit uncomfortable. He wheeled around straight away, didn't he? So it must obviously be something quite bad. As soon as the point was done, he sort of wheeled back to his side of the court. And you can see there, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know whether he's got a cut on it, just the beginning of tissue to stem the blood. Hopefully he's not got it caught and twisted it or something that wouldn't be ideal for him the problem is it's on his playing hand as well isn't it yeah and he doesn't seem that type of guy to suffer pain lightly does he so it must be quite bad for him to have stopped yeah you can see the blood on the tissue there he's uh, in some discomfort I would imagine well let's hope he can carry on first and foremost because this is uh, of concern. Richard Haig coming to the scene. Now here's the train and it's uh, listening. celebrate the uh, Hewitt and Reed have both made the OBEs in the King's Birthday Honours list. They've won uh, four Wimbledon titles together. Lucy Shooker 
and she was awarded a British Empire Medal as well, so congratulations to them. And the women's event, of course, moved to Eastbourne. That's going to be happening, unfolding next week, alongside the quads event as well, down on the south coast. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gerard is now receiving a medical timeout. Rothsey International again this year. So an MTO then for Joachim Gerard. Wounds getting cleaned up. But Britain's Alpha Hewitt, Gordon Reed, Lucy Shooker, Andy Lapthorne, and Greg Slade are all entered for the British wheelchair events at Wimbledon this year after Gordon, Lucy, and Greg were among the wild cards announced on last Wednesday. And the wheelchair tennis event, of course, runs a, a, a day later in the second, a day earlier in the second week, from the 12th to the 16th. So we're starting on the second Wednesday at Wimbledon. And that's all covered by the BBC. Following Wimbledon, all these guys head towards the next major event on the wheelchair tennis world circuit at the uh, British Open. Chair tennis champs in Nottingham from the 1st to the 6th uh, again, there's a, a stellar entry list with uh, most of the top players taking play, taking uh, part in that. But the British Open has been among the uh, select roster of Super Series events on tour since 1995. These days, it's only the Grand Slams that sit above Super Series level. Most of these top athletes have uh, uh, played at the World Team Cup in Villamora just a month or so ago. Great Britain won the men's and junior team World Team Cup events. They were the champions in Villamora in early May. So big shout out to uh, Alfie Hewitt, Gordon Reed and Ben Bartram who helped to uh, combine and get uh, GB across the line third title since 2015, they beat the Netherlands 2-0 in the final recently. But mercifully, Big Joe seems okay and able to carry on, hopefully. 15 Delighting so many of these two with the tennis they've played so far. It's a fine backhand return from Gerard. Presumption. He's engineered a couple of break back points here. Thirty forty. Chair jamming serve from top seed. Anna, hasn't he, Gerard, to just take the match out of your hands with returns like that? Yeah, he does. He didn't miss by much, did he? Those fine margins that we see in tennis so often. And this will be a big hold here for Alfie Hewitt if he can find a way to get through this game, just stop the momentum that Gerard has been building.
Well, he seemed there, but maybe the ball uh, just away from him from left to right. Looked like he anticipated the down the line as well, didn't he? Sort of had to reorientate the chair, just cover the cross court instead, and just couldn't quite reach it. Again, the wind maybe just picking up. You can hear on the encore microphones. Gerard pushing hard in his chair, turns that one in his favour, and very much stays in touch in this opening set, keeping an ever menacing presence, the reigning and defending champion. No immediate issues with that right finger that he had the medical timeout for just moments ago. That was a very strong game from him. Given what we saw. It yeah, it was, and, you know, having to deal with that, he had played a really good couple of opening points, and then for that sort of finger injury to happen, it sort of stifled him a little bit, didn't he? And it looked quite serious at the time. A lot of blood was coming out, but thankfully he's okay, but he did well to just refocus and regroup after that, and, you know, obviously getting back to Juice, you thought maybe Alfie was just going to sneak that game, but played a really good last couple of points. He's obviously got quite a high pain threshold, hasn't he? Because he's and also another thing, Anna, he's got some heavy taping on that finger. Right. Sometimes that can feel a little cumbersome. That gives you an indicator there of the uh, umbrella there being used for all the right reasons, but being blown around vigorously. It, it really has picked up the breeze here today, which is uh, welcome for many, of course, if you're in the stands, because it's just slightly cooling on what's been the hottest day at Queen's, pretty much so far. Gerard then. Locked in at 3-4, but armed with new balls. Love the wind pretty. took it as well a little bit there, just got hold of the ball and it jammed into Gerard a little bit, just didn't quite catch out of the middle of the racket. Because remember, as an able-bodied player in the wind, Danny, you know this more than most, that you would keep pedalling your feet around until the last minute, wouldn't you? You wouldn't set and then hope for the best. These guys have to do exactly the same in the chair, presumably. You can't set too early in the, in the breeze. <laughs> It's always the footwork that's so important, isn't it? You've got to stay on your toes. You've always got to keep bouncing around the ball. Anytime you get static, that's the time where you sort of start framing balls or they don't quite go in the direction that you want. Oh, yes, the quality really high there on the forehand return. Hewitt. 15.30. Getting a bit of a read on the Gerard serve, isn't he? Just making a few more moves in these... Last couple of Gerard service games here. He needs to find some big first serves here to help him out. Fifteen forty. Five games to three. Incidentally, just uh, moments ago, we mentioned the fact that these players after Wimbledon will be going on to the British Open from the 1st to the 6th of August in Nottingham. Alfie was the 2021 champion there, and Joe, the 22 champion at the British Open in Nottingham. Tickets available from the LTA website, 1st to the 6th of August. Pencil that in your diary. Great event.
Love 15. Big roll there from the Belgian as well. Just hasn't been able to get enough going, enough consistency. Felt like he was starting to build some momentum, and Alfie's done really well to squash it and get his own momentum. Can he find a way to make Hewitt struggle here? <laughs> quality line back and return from Gerard. He's at it again. Love just 30. when you think you've got the upper hand and you're looking good, he can suddenly just snap the game out with early returns of serve like that. Let's first serve. look here at the movement look how much he's already moving inside the baseline to take it on just gets it out in front able to redirect it look here small compact swing but the direction is so good he's already in the back end as well almost waiting for him to break back points here the defending champion oh yeah it skipped away from him a little there didn't it funky spin from 15 40. did look like he pulled his chair back just a fraction too much and then just didn't quite have the time did he to move back into it it's a very game special run. return game world number four QA leads five games to four done with this opening set just yet. He stays in touch, nipping away at Alfie Hewitt's heels. As Hewitt leads five. We said how good he is at snatching match momentum. And there was a great example of exactly just how dangerous he always is, particularly on a faster court. I remember covering him for the first time I think in 2015 where he won the NEC Masters indoors and he was just like this, just rampant. And he can just snatch the match away from you so quickly. Well, everybody seems to have come prepared. There's sunscreen, water bottles, hats, shades. People coming in with trays of drinks looks from left to right. It's great. It's a nice little shady nook down there, isn't it? Time. Left seats are pretty busy on there. Everyone's trying to find a way to sneak in the shade over there, but it's it's hot out there. I saw someone look like they'd stuck their drink in the freezer for the whole night. It was just pure ice, and, and that's what you've got to do today, isn't it? To try and stay cool. Like it's been sellout as well, Queens. Throughout the week, every day, sold out. Ten and a half thousand tickets. Boom. In hot demand. It's... Uh, men's wheelchair singles final bubbling up nicely a taste of his own medicine for Gerard there Love 15. he hasn't been quite as dominant on his serve though today has he Hewitt did mention in his interview yesterday he's going to have to look to do more with the returns and he has done that really really well Out aggression, serving him very, very well. 
walk in that tightrope of aggression yet percentage. He's doing it very well at the moment. It's away from the set now, Hewitt. Love 40. That's bobbled over the service line as well. Surely one of these three for the world number two. Three set points for Hewitt. Oh, he's found that as well. He loves the target as Alpha Hewitt. And he notches the opening set with a lovely little surge of top tennis from the British number one. Six games to four. He's halfway home to a second title in Queens. Fantastic set there from Alpha Hewitt. Just the way he was able to turn it around after those opening couple of games. You thought Gerard was in control, but. Absolutely not. Hubert just found another gear to go to, didn't he? Just started being more aggressive. We saw that you know, those Alfie Hewitt roars that we're so accustomed to and all oh, credit, the returns really were stand out at the end. Well he's probably taken on a lot of fluid here, Anna. That's what this is all about. He wants to perhaps leave the court on that basis that he's he's, he's uh, just thrown himself into his day chair momentarily. He's taking leave of the court and uh, probably needs a bathroom break. They're being taken on a lot of drink. Yeah, the numbers, Anna. I mean, the standout for me there is the first serve points one from Joachim Gerard, 37%. When do we ever see numbers like that behind the first serve for him? And that's got to be all credit to Alfie Hewitt, just how good he was on the first serve, because it wasn't a bad percentage, 64% in as well. But Gerard's really got to want to increase those numbers as well. And Hewitt backed up his serve better than Gerard does, returned better, created those opportunities and was just more clinical in the end. Yeah, and you sort of sense when he's mid-rally as well. We, we spoke initially about the keenness of Alfie in the chair, the way that he pushes around so aggressively that he defends his core better than Joachim Gerard, who's a, a much heavier unit to, to get around. So I think it's one thing that Hewitt has really improved on that physicality and we've seen it couple of times this week already in some of those longer rallies where he's really had to cover every blade of grass just how physical he can be you know he's almost fallen out of his chair a couple of times because he's just throwing himself at the ball and he has just been a little bit quicker in those exchanges he's you know the way he's able to maneuver the chair to get in the right place make an extra ball back and Gerard just hasn't really been able to deal with it Gerard, of course, has uh, become a major force in the grass season. He got the Grand Slam monkey off his back, winning Wimbledon two years ago, 2021. He feels very comfortable on this surface. But again, look, the, he's got the trainer out. The wind is blowing keenly today, as you can see in uh, our Sims Championship flag. It's really picked up. And you would imagine that on a day like that, that would favour the slightly sort of more agile player in Hewitt. Sometimes though it's a bigger hit, you're able to, to penetrate the wind and sort of nullify it, but he just hasn't quite been able to. We've seen a couple of times that he's hit it off the frame, or you know, we saw a couple of minutes ago that the ball that he just wasn't able to quite move through the wind maybe caught it, wasn't able to connect with the forehand and 
right, Alfie's maybe just dealt with the conditions a little bit better. It's it's been weird. It's been very blustery. Then it's died down. It's gone blustery again. It's it's not the easiest of conditions. No, it's not. We've found that's where keen people watch us and we're enjoying seeing people and what they're wearing and, and how they're conducting themselves. A lot of linen shirts being worn from a lot of people. And of course, the men's ATP singles final doesn't start until 1:30. And what's great about that, with half an hour to go, is that a lot of the fans are sort of into the grounds now. They'll come and take a peek at this, without a doubt. Trying to sort of strain their necks to see around the corners if they haven't got a seat to see what's unfolding here, because this is high level chair tennis with uh, two of the very best in the game. Of course, it's Carlos Alcaraz, the Spaniard, who uh, brings so much excitement with him so much game that everybody has come to see in the able-bodied event. Alex de Minor, his uh, task da -da today in the all-seeded clash, top seed against the seventh seed from Australia. De Minor playing some cracking ball as well. He's had a good run. Then that's followed by the ATP doubles final. Taylor Fritz, Yuri Lehechka, who took out the top seeds. They play uh, Ivan Dorig and Austin Krychek, the States Ocean American pair as the second seeds. for me in this issue with the taping is that that can feel really quite unnerving when you've got anything really on your tennis hand you know what it feels like viewers when you, you you're trying to grip the racket and there's something sort of impeding slightly it might be feeling a little cumbersome if it's too thick it's just about getting it right you certainly don't want it too tight or too loose because they'll just come off if there is blood involved then that might help it slide off as well so it's a very delicate operation these Physios, trainers are highly trained and very practical. They follow the circuit year round and they are incredibly knowledgeable. And of course, to follow this match, we've got the chair doubles final. Hewitt and Rick take on Gerard and Hude, so they'll both be back in action. And it says followed by on the order of play, but I'd imagine there'll be a decent amount of time, which we'll announce to you in due course. That the players will need to uh, refuel and go again. And that's one of the corners of the venue. As you walk in the main gate, you see you're, you're uh, slapped in the face with that big roll of honor board there drapes around the corner of the centre court stand. Well, I hope this for Wimbledon as well. The umbrella's used for all the right reasons. And I tell you what, you've got to shout out to the thousand or so qualified officials in this country. They're often only noticed when things go wrong, but they do a great job, as do the ball kids as well. Look at this. Well, they concentrate for such long periods. Their contribution they make to the tournament, and more broadly in tennis in Britain, really is vital. Because without them, none of this can go ahead. And that's why I also feel for them a little. What with the onslaught of the sort of uh, automatic line calling, because you kind of think that if you're an aspiring lines judge, then this would be where you want to get to. Yeah, you would. I mean, there are, there are so many people. Obviously, when I was kind of growing up, going through the levels and you know we didn't have Hawkeye or anything like that so we had lines judges and you know sometimes they do get a bad rap don't they and you know as tennis players I'm sure you've done it as well as I have over the years given them a bit of an earful on a few bad line calls every now and again but you know there is something I think that's special about having the line judges there as well and you know obviously everyone wants a correct call with Hawkeye and things like that but but I don't know, I, j I just feel like there is something special about having those line judges and when they all walk out onto court just before the match and maybe I'm sort of a bit old fashioned, but it, you know, I, I just think it brings, uh, it's part of that tradition.
So it's a beautiful day at the Queen's Club as we uh, approach the start of set number two. Can Joachim Gerard, the reigning and defending champion, get his teeth in here? It's a must-win set as far as he's concerned if he wants to go on and uh, defend his title in singles. Today's showpiece, Alfie, just dropping five games himself, so they have been both imperious. Okay. Can the world number two, in turquoise blue, keep the burly Belgium at arm's length to continue to diffuse his opponent's power game? Set to the good, then 6 4. Alfie serving. It's set two here. managing to get the backhand up high Here's and arcing. Zeno. And I think that if you can get the early Gerard return back, then the Belgian kind of can struggle a little bit with the next shot because he's up the court and he's got to then wheel back to the baseline to uh, extend the rally. You see there, he loves the ball if it's at shoulder height, doesn't he? Anything there and you're sort of in trouble against him, but anytime you can get the ball above that shoulder height, him really having to stretch for it, that's when you're going to get a few errors like we saw on that previous forehand. Yeah, he's at it again, he'll do that all day long. You and I, Anna, we've been courtside watching him do this for half an hour at a time where he gets his coach, their able body coach, just hammering serves at him. He comes in and he repeats, cut and paste, cut and paste. He'll do it all day long. Alfie's got to find a way of getting him a little bit more uncomfortable. Again, it's just a game top draw. draw return game, isn't it? Gerard game breaks immediately set. in set two. And it's off to an absolute flyer. A little spinning out of the start lines in this set. I think the scary thing as well, when we were watching him do that, it was just how few he actually missed. And it didn't matter the pace of the serve either. Even when he was going and cracking a few harder, it was just sort of, okay, I'm just going to nudge it down the line, I'm going to put it cross court. And it was just, he was just able to redirect. He just looks, doesn't look like he's trying to add pace, which I think some people can get wrong on the return. They try and force it a little bit, but he just tries to take time away, which is such a clever tactic. Yeah, it's kind of metronomic repeatability. in that backhand from Hewitt. It makes such a difference as well when they 
open the court up, doesn't it, when they go a little bit wider, get more width on the ball. Both players are so comfortable when the rally's sort of in that middle portion of the court. high-powered encounter this one and it's living up to it's billing nicely their previous encounter was uh, here last year in the second half hours took Gerard 6-2 in the third set to cross the line on that occasion Alfie won the first set as well out 15 and 30 so don't write the Belgian off he's a very strong athlete that can go around the houses and keep fighting all day long got a nice sense of calm about him so he doesn't use up too much of his energy reserves on emotionality idiosyncrasies of these players the way that they like to get themselves really comfortable in their chairs and sort of talking to themselves just trying to get it all right that state controlling the controllables you'd love to know what Alfie's saying to himself yeah, wouldn't yeah. you Breaks back immediately and greets it with a roar. What a terrific return game that was from the British number one. One game on. Done that often though, hasn't he today so far? As soon as Gerald's managed to get the break, he's broken straight back. He really just hasn't let the Belgium have any momentum in this match. to put the pressure back on Gerard here can he get a comfortable hold but Gerard really finding the returns at the moment It's been a topsy turvy affair so far, hasn't it? Very high level. Fifteen on that threat of the white blur size of a truck just wheeling towards you trying to take on your second serve nice and stuff making Hewitt double fault there <laughs> top serve there from world number two a little time to you know get his chair back into the middle of the court smart shot selection isn't it it's you know clear thinking and, and being clever with what you need to do at the right time it's easy to want to go for that highlights real shot but giving yourself time get back into the rad precision with the serve plus one Number two. Fifteen. 
so much racket head speed to break the sideline. Well, didn't he on the volley? He had it on his racket. It wasn't easy, but just didn't quite get that net clearance. And you do feel as if this is quite an important game for both players. Can Hewitt keep his momentum going, or can Gerard stifle the Brit? We watched this match last year, Anna, and uh, Alfie took the first set on a tiebreak then lost his way early in the second and the third sets to lose two and two thereafter. So he'll be guarded right now. He's done it again. And a lovely roar as well from Hewitt, just to get inside the head of the Gerard. All these little micro decisions really starting to compound pressure on the Belgian. second getting to jump more on landing doing so errant well, there's normally six balls in play that perhaps the other end serving end as he can so he can just get a little bit more help from the freshest balls that he selects. That's a good serve. Maybe Gerard's going to have to cover that because that's been one of Hewitt's weapons today so far. He's got quite a few free points using that slider out wide. Maybe Gerard can just shift over a little bit, force Hewitt to have to go down to the tee or try and slide it into the body. little sticky this Hewitt service game and that'll make British fans a little bit anxious I'm sure especially given what we see from Gerard who is just lurking with intent any second serve opportunity to his camp, Ben Collingwood and Craig Allen, that he wants to do it right here. Using his deep breathing skills to relax, steps off stage momentarily and wheels back round quickly to re-engage. I like these positive rituals. Big, big game to come through. World number two, Alfie Hewitt holds on to what was a pivotal game. It leads 2 1. There might also be that element of what happened last year in the back of his head as well. Like you said, he won that opening set, didn't he? But just sort of fell off, wasn't able to keep up his level throughout the whole match. And probably senses that these few games in the second set are really crucial to the outcome. 
really wants to put Gerard to bed as soon as he possibly can. events at the Sinjin Champs and the Rothsay International Eastbourne next week are all part of the ITF's Uniqlo Wheelchair Tennis World Tour and we'll have ITF Series uh, 2 status. The tour now consists of more than 160 tournaments over 40 countries around the world with a total prize money fund of three and a quarter million US dollars. And when it all started out back in 1992 with an initial Sorry. 11 international tournaments, that's all it's included all four grand slams. A real coup towards wheelchair tennis, and it is great. So much fun to watch. We've got expanded draws now around uh, qualifying and grand slams. Gerard, hold on here. Trailing a set. On serve in set two. For a big man, Anna, we've discussed a lot this week. He's got gorgeous Good touch around the net, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, and sometimes you see some of these big guys and, and players who are all about brute strength just not really have that feel but he possesses all of it doesn't he he's got a great slice backhand fantastic bodies it is very adept in all areas of the court you can see there Alfie was very invested in that return good to know demanding a lot right here as we sort of touched on these big moments early passages of Sefer Hewitt having let go at this stage last year against today's opponent and lost Feeling more and more comfortable out here as well, isn't he? I think one thing I really liked about his interview and what he was saying yesterday was he was just talking about always learning, always developing, whether it be understanding to play on different surfaces, the, the physical elements of it. It's a sign of a great player. Very special there from the backhand line from Hewitt. 15 40. Yeah, it's that humility that you love about Alfie. So gracious. In defeat as well. I think you always, you almost, almost learn more in defeats, don't you? And and when you're a good player and in order to get better, you've got to try and find those little things that you can always improve on. He just seems to be fantastic at that. Oh, it's bobbled over the net. A little bit yeah, of good fortune, but he constructed the point beautifully there, Alfie Hewitt. Great serve again. Rock sound to a two game cushion. Early doors of set two. Set three, one up now. He did a good job there, Anna, didn't he? Mentally, just keeping on his back. That's one thing he's improved on as well, hasn't he? He's just 
relentless and I think all the top players are there's just never a moment time, well no time to breathe is there for the opponent they always want to stay on them stay on them and that's what Alfie's got at the moment and you guys are probably a bit too young to remember Ivan Lendl with pocket full of sawdust he was nicknamed the Terminator because when he got ahead he'd just crush you But of course, you know, if you try, it's so easy to overtry as well, isn't it? It's finding that balance, isn't it, between the two. You want to extend the lead, but he's also got to remember what he's done well to get to this and doesn't feel like he's got to do even more. The onus is on Gerard to find something different. Just enough quality on the serve to pull Gerard to slide it across the turn and miss in doing so. Beautifully taken from the Belgian. Power and slice twinning perfectly here. Look at this. Another big moment to deal with for Alfie Hewitt. 30 40 on his own serve. Desperate to hold on. Pressure from Gerard a little too much. Hewitt up unhappy with himself there about that double fall, understandably. It's Gerard that stays in touch in the second set, rolling around for 2 3 now. Take him lightly at your peril. Weight of expectation, particularly on Alpha Hewitt's shoulders, really. Although this man in your picture is the defending champion, Hewitt, of course, recently dethroned in Paris of his world number one status, being pegged down to number two in the world after the loss to uh, Tokito Buda of Japan. For those of you that have not seen him play, the left-hander, he's fabulous. You've got to watch him. He sits really tall in his chair. He's like Hewitt. He's, he's very animated. And he's got lots of energy, throws himself around with great effect. And uh, certainly one to watch. He's the current world number one on the basis that he beat Hewitt in Roland Garros final. Time. It was a straight sets win as well, fairly long sided if I'm honest. But Alfie's obviously taken a lot from him. And Annie, you said yesterday, sometimes you learn when you lose. Yeah, you absolutely do, and sometimes it's easy to get comfortable, and I'm not saying Alfie was comfortable, but all of a sudden this is a bit of a kick up the backside, isn't it? And you've got someone who's coming for your throne and is taking it as well, and you know, he's got that determination and he wants to get it back from him.
rallies of the match. That was a lung buster, that one. Punishing in the Love one o'clock heat. Using that height again, wasn't he? Getting Gerard above shoulder height and had to resort to that sort of squash shot forehand slice to try and get it back. Just top, clip the top of the tape. Forty fifty. Timely ace, Gerard. Attempting to draw level here in the second set. A must winner as far as he's concerned. Games are up. New balls, please. Couple of successive games then. Three games all. From the Burley Gym. And he locks in to square the set at three games all. He'll be feeling a lot better about his plight right now. Sore finger or not. Now Alfie, haunted by the fact that he was moments ago 3-1 serving in the second set. Can he hold on here and stop the run of two games for the Belgian? Got new balls to help. He's done well in that department today. He's found his spots on a regular basis, Selfie. in the game at serve and return so important so much time for this man spent rehearsing those two skills
Pretty well, it makes you go for more on your second serve. It's that simple. That's where that error's come from. Hope you do it. Doesn't help either one that Breeze is picking up as well. And you've got this huge Belgian coming at you with such a presence, and then you've got the Breeze just blustering with the ball toss. It's not a great combination for Hewitt. Deadlocked on the scoreboard. It's set two right now. He's just got to back himself right now, hasn't he? He's got the potency off the ground. We know all about that quality. But he's got to get the ball out of the strike zone with Belgium. And again, just 30, missing 40. by millimeters, but it was a very intentful second serve again. Maybe this is where the stats that you know that you haven't beaten your opponent on grass and these sort of things just are in the back of your head as well and as you sort of get in to the business end of the match those thoughts can creep in and he's really just got to try and put those away focus on each point as it comes Oh, he's like a caged Enjoy. tiger, and he's done it again. Gerard leads four, game to three. From 1-3 down in the second set is Gerard, that has a trio of successive Belgian games. He now breaks to the front in the set, leading 4-3. Such a tough player to contain with all that he brings. And you can see a few times there, Alfie was just two double faults where he was just going big. Just going a little bit too close to the line, isn't he? And you're absolutely right when you say just, you, you feel the pressure and it's just that, it's just that build up, isn't it? It's that cumulative pressure that we talk about over time. And as soon as that scoreboard pressure gets a little bit closer, all of a sudden feel like you've got to go for the lines. And that's when the errors start creeping in. and. I don't know whether maybe you felt this as well, but just over the last couple of the games, he's just gone into a shell a little bit more. He's very demonstrative at the start of this opening second set. And, you know, we haven't heard any big roars just trying to get the adrenaline going. And that's normally when he plays his best tennis, isn't it? When he's like that. Yeah, he's got to find a way of upping the intensity right now, I'll figure it, because this man has come to the party. He's made a nice, nice little surge. fans perspective hasn't it Alfie's not given them a lot courtside to sort of clutch onto and help support well the second serve was late the call but it was uh, long Super serve, plus one from Gerard. He's back at his bullying best right now. I was just going to say, he seems to be bossing a few more of these points, doesn't he? Found a few more first serves. It's more like it. 30 
crowd trying to give him some energy as well, aren't they? A big roar after that point from the Brit. Can he really just ride that wave and get the crowd to help him? Good from Gerard, who is just so menacing once he's inside the baseline on a roll. Belgian game on the spin. Five games to three. He's on a mission right now. He's come from 1-3 to 5-3 up. And he's going to take some stopping now with all of this momentum behind him. The Belgian truck gathering momentum. creeping into the Hewitt game as well. I don't know whether the hot conditions are playing their part. A little bit of fatigue may be kicking in as well. I think in the back of his mind he knows he's 0-3 against Gerard on grass. He just doesn't feel good in this dynamic against today's opponent. Defending champion looking menacing. And he's done a good job in the last four games in particular just to get right inside the head of Alfie. Alfie Hewitt's coach, what are you saying to him in these moments now? Calm down, compartmentalize each point one by one. You know, he's, he's, he's almost like his future pacing a little, getting ahead of himself, just go one ball at a time. You know, it's so easy to say that old adage, isn't it? But there is a sense of panic. There's no doubting that. I think he's got ahead of himself. You can see he's overpressing and the court feels small to him right now. You know, the dynamics are still the same. It's just it's, it mentally inside his head, he's just got to sort of stop, pause, step off stage and reset. Set point for Gerard right now. Let's second serve. Second set. Joachim Gerard turns on the style and in familiar fashion as he did three, uh, one, in their last settle. encounter in the semi finals here last year. He snatches the second set as he did back then. Back on level terms. It's going to be a one set shootout then for the spoils here at Queen's. He takes it six games to three. intensity has really fallen through the floor it's gone very quiet it has from 3-1 in that uh, second set rather you felt the momentum was so in Hewitt's favor but all of a sudden when he dropped that game you just sort of felt it crumble didn't you and you look at the Gerrard's percentages as well they're definitely up the third
So it's a beautiful day here at Queen's. Everybody enjoying the sun and a bit of welcome breeze. He's got to play like Rafael Nadal, hasn't he, and take a leaf out of his book, Alfie Hewitt, just uh, go one point at a time. Because he's he's lost his way, rather, hasn't he, Anna? Yeah, he has, and it's just a little bit of energy, I think, in that second set. Probably, probably thought he was a little bit home and dry, and that's dangerous when you're playing a player like Joachim Gerrard. Things can turn on a dime, can't they? And he's got to really just lower those double faults that he had and, and try and just get on these return games a little bit more sweet strike can he build from Love there 15. got to try and use the energy from the crowd as well but he's got to give them something to help him feed off of and that's exactly the way he would have wanted to start with that return yeah, you can't help but sense he got ahead of himself in that previous set when he was 3-1 serving so Gerard here playing for a sixth consecutive game, the Belgian. From 1-3 down. It's rough. And it's a horrible place to be if you're Alfie Hewitt, isn't it? Because you you got so close, and then suddenly the, the, the energy is just like a, a popped balloon just left you, and you've got to suddenly now try and keep blowing back into the third set balloon to, to build something. when we've been playing where we've been a set and 4-1 a set and 5-2 up and all of a sudden you lose that second set and you don't know where it's gone because you've just you've got it in touching distance don't you and then it's about how you're able to to find a way to put that disappointment behind you and that's exactly the case now for for Hewitt how is he going to be able to do that and he's got to do it quickly as well game's right first game final set Jochen Gerrard, the world number four, second seed as the reigning and defending champion. Very much on the up here now in this men's wheelchair singles final. He is suddenly looking a lot more assured and assertive. With a sixth game in a row, he's on a mission, certainly on a roll. For Alfie Hewitt, you can't help but think that he's kind of mentally taunted and haunted by exactly what happened last year, which is this. He took the first set on a tie break in the semi-finals in that two and a half hour encounter, losing to this man in the last floor, then lost 6-2, 6-2 thereafter. So he's got to find a way right here. That's where it starts. Can he overcome the mental demons? Love. Plenty for courtside, getting behind him. Has he got the energy as well, though, isn't it? Hot conditions out there. It's it's not easy for either player. And it's not like he's playing an also round. This man here in your picture is a 2021 Wimbledon champion. He knows exactly what a grass court is all about, how to bring his best. We talked about 
the match last year as well, but also if you're Gerard as well, you've got to take a lot of confidence from that as well and know that you can come back. More pop on the serve from Hewitt there, that's encouraging. 30, 50. mind can go to some dark places on the tennis court can't it and become a little bit problem obsessed but he's now seems to be heading for the sun and hunting the solution another super length 40, serve from Britain's finest that's one thing though when you get more mature you play more matches you gain more experience you a little bit more adept at problem solving don't you and in, in these moments where you're sort of back against the wall that's when you're able to find the ways and problem solve Forty thirty. six consecutive from Joachim Gerrard comes to an end and we have scoreboard parity once again deadlock such an enticing championship match this one this all seeded highly decorated affair now for Hewitt's never beat Joachim Gerrard for those of you joining along 0 from 3 for us Fifteen, Unbelievable shot there from Gerard on the stretch. That forehand slice, how was he able to generate that much pace and keep it so low and get the angle as well? Fantastic shot. Fifteen all. Well, we always anticipated a slugfest power battle for supremacy in this title decider, and it's living up to its billing nicely. Thirty fifteen. tears through another service. Imperious accuracy from Gerard. Winners are starting to flow off his racket a lot more freely, aren't they? Not a good sign for Hewitt. Forty thirty. 
well, if nothing else, that sort of different look from Gerard will will keep Alfie guessing in terms of court position in the future. So that's kind of almost like uh, good to play it at that stage because it just keeps Hewitt honest further down the line. <laughs> Dude. 10 out of 10 strike off the forehand return from the British number one. Might be regretting that drop shot though, isn't it? It didn't need to be that good. Unless you said it was the right idea. Keep Hewitt guessing a little bit more, keep him honest, but it could cost him. Advantage Hewitt. Now, more opportunity for Alfie Hewitt, who seems to have aligned his mindset into a better place right now. Can he break serve here? Oh, that's just too good from the Belgian, Dude. such accuracy, spreading the court beautifully. The windscreen wipers on Hewitt there. Bob. Well, nothing could do about that. Hewitt didn't like it. He thought it was out. I have to say, I did think it clipped the line. It did look like it curved. Sometimes you can see it out when you desperately want it out, can't you? Well, Gerard commendably holds on and uh, keeps in the ascendancy in the early passages of set three here. He's so hard to contain the power laden 34 year old from Brussels. quite sort of um, undemonstrative isn't he with uh, his passage through at the moment he's been very contained together seems quite happy to go under the radar doesn't he completely different personality to, to Alfie he's so much more out there you know you can tell what he's feeling can't you whereas Gerard there's that understated occasional fist pump you get at an alley every once in a while but you know he just has that resilience he's not going anywhere and he's shown that in this match he showed it last year as well and it's going to be who can just find that determination to get over the line Alfie Hewitt then trailing 1-2 third set here Good team, love. Love. 
Now this sort of match, Anna, you know what it's like when it gets into your head. It's it's all about your mental dynamics, isn't it? And how much you believe, deep-seated belief, how much training you've done to... Know you can get across the line. That's a pattern of play that we haven't seen for a while long. from Alfie. He loves that forehand angle. We saw a lot of that in the opening set. Yeah, he needs to use that forehand a little bit more, like you said was so effective earlier on, just breaking the sidelines, finding that width. We need to see if he can do that more often. Genuine. A wonderful, much needed, two love service all. hold for Alfie Hewitt as he locks in at two games all. It's turning out to be a grueling encounter out here on court one. Still nothing between them. I think he's got to try and draw on experience that he has had, hasn't he? He's won so many titles and so many big titles and he'll have faced adversity in those times. He's got to really, he's got that confidence to be able to find a way through. Beautiful banging backhand return winner from Hewitt, who's won the last three matches against Gerard, all on outside hard courts over the last 18 months or so. So he knows he can do it, but he's never beaten the man on a grass court before. 0-3. That's what he's grappling with right now. It's such a nuanced surface that kind of really does favour Gerard with his patterns of play. <laughs> Perfectly weighted. Little dose of luck as well. Lovely. from Gerard. Three windows of opportunity for Hewitt here. Now we got the door, the door ajar. Can he smash it down? to back games of Hewitt very high quality pushes out to a 3-2 lead with another break of the Gerard serve things looking up again for the world number two another momentum shift isn't it 15 minutes ago we probably weren't thinking that this was going to happen but he's just found a way he's just found a new reserve of energy and He's getting the crowd into it as well, isn't he? He's really feeding off the energy that they bring in. I think he wants to be the first person to win this title twice, doesn't he? If he can get over the line. And I think a lot of people will really resonate with this because in, a, in an able-bodied tennis world that's so power-obsessed, you see that the serve isn't as dominating, as dictatorial as it is, you know, on the adjacent centre court, which is without doubt a terrific match unfolding. But but it's different, and, and there is more nuances, and there are more subtleties and, and swings in wheelchair tennis. It's the way it is, and it, it's great to watch. It, it, it makes for a good a good view, that's for sure. But so far, we've 
had uh, a lot of undulations from both players in this long, windy road. Who's going to get across the line? Alfie Hewitt with the latest ambush on the Gerrard serve. But this is the tough thing now. Can he hold on to his own serve? Familiar predicament. He was a set three one up in the second set, lost his way. Just figuring out well where to place his ball to toss. Staring into the dazzler. Yeah, he was wise to it that time, the Belgian. La Petit. This is the 33rd meeting between the two, so they're very familiar with each other's patterns of play. Well, he compounds pressure on her so well, doesn't he? Because not only does he return early, but he follows it well, into him. He got nowhere to go. He's a dominating presence, and that's not what you want to see. This huge figure coming forward to the net and again is there going to be another shift in momentum here we've seen so many throughout this match so far Fifteen thirty. Just enough pop on the serve to keep danger at bay for Hewitt. Now this is a huge point right here. Having let go at this stage in the second set and let his opponent go on a six game tear, he's got to get a grip right now. There's nothing you can do against that sort of quality on return, but Hewitt furious with himself about putting it in the strike zone of the Belgian. You can see the frustration as well, can't you? Like you said, just found that forehand strike zone and that's just never going to come back. Dispatches it really well and another break point again. Press that time though. Surprising miss, wasn't it? It looked like it was, uh, you know, he was right on course for that, but maybe there was a little bit more spin from Alfie's serve. I'm not sure. Got it done well, though. It just looked like he went a little bit too close to the line as well, didn't he? Greedy. Well, there'll be lots of uh, oohs and ahs and sighs from British fans over that double fault. That was untimely. Be careful not to throw himself under a bus here, Hewitt. Having worked so hard to get to this situation. It's Gerard here with a second break point. Looking Jared again with too much imposing threat. Free game Break serve. Draws level in the decider. Locked out. Match squared at 3 all. Which way is this 
winding road going to turn next? Who knows? <laughs> you wouldn't want to put your money on it's it, would you? It's been so watchable, though, hasn't it? A, a title decider that you, you couldn't have asked for any better, really. Sometimes the matches in the final aren't quite all that lived up to, but this really has reminiscent of last year's final, isn't it? Semi, yeah. Fifteen he's back on it again, isn't he? He's just got that sort of grass court efficiency that makes it that he just he's just so academic with what he does. So repeatable. Another clean winner from the racket of Gerard. 30 love. As soon as you drop short, you're in trouble. Such good defence as well. A couple of times he was really on the stretch on the backhand, just found a way to get back and with great depth as well, wasn't it? Put Alfie Hewitt on the back foot and as soon as he got that backhand slice, he made no mistake. Second there, as did many at home. I'm sure that after he's going to be asked an extra question there. So the ball uh, faded over the baseline. Winners abound from Joachim Gerrard, who again shows us his quality. The reigning defending champion looking really good right now. He's got the momentum, and he's ahead 4-3 through the belly of this deciding set. Taking it all in his stride, calm and together. He's played a really good mental match, having lost that opening set, pulled this one back so keenly. Is in the ascendancy. Well, just on a lighter note, it was Alfie Hewitt that uh, won the doubles title last year with Stefan Houdet, and they'll be opposite sides of the net in our next match. It'll be Hewitt and Reed as the top seeds, and world number one. So we'll be taking on Gerard and Houdet as the second seeds in the doubles time but of course these players will need rest so I would imagine at least we'll give them a th that it's a three setter maybe even sort of 45 minutes rest or so possibly even more. so maybe an hour especially with these temperatures yeah. I think it's uh, running over a certain amount of time if you play you you are due an hour so we'll see what the referee says and what they come into agreement after this match Fifteen 
30 low. Gutsy serve. From Hewitt. Feels like it's got a tie break written all over it, doesn't it, this final set? And I think it would only be fitting if it did go that way. Massive game from Alfie Hewitt. Mentally giant from him right there to lock in at four games four all and stay ball. with the defending champion. Best service game in a while there from Hewitt. Really dominant, wasn't he? Really went after the forehand, after the serve, and it really paid off. And you do feel that whoever's going to come out on top here, it's almost fortune favoring the brave, don't you? So you've got to go after it. You know, neither player is going to give it to you. He's got that very, um, well, we've spoken of this before last year, and the Belgians got that very sort of like pre serve ritual. There's a deliberate moment of calm right there. <laughs> Massive from Hewitt again as he spikes the line with his backhand winner. Can he rouse himself again to really push? for the spoils here. Now's the time, you sense. Can he shift and find another gear? again right now is Alfie Hewitt 15, 30. and rousing the fans courtside he needs all the help he can get let's face it having never beaten Gerard before on grass half chance on the scoreboard again. Outs. 30-40. Well, we know grass is so nuanced. It's all about the aggressor really you don't really want to be chasing the point if you can help it and Hewitt there just managing to do enough just uh, administering some running repairs is uh, Joachim his game and gets the reward towards the sharp end of this men's wheelchair really singles final. And he now leads 5-4, just a service hold away from victory.
first serves right now. Priority number one for Alfie Hewitt. That's all he'll be thinking about, I'm sure. First couple of points in this game are crucial, aren't they? If Alfie Hewitt can race out to a 30 love lead, the pressure is hugely on the Belgian. But if he can just get one of the opening couple of points, going to be making Alfie Hewitt think a little bit. It's been a terrific final, hasn't it? Really, everything we hoped for and more, frankly. Twists and turns all over the place. Time. Engaging all the fans courtside and around the world watching this. Now, the moment of truth then for Britain's Alfie Hewitt. First point is colossal right now. He's serving for the title of 5 4, deciding set. Love 15. Maybe a little bit of nerves in that shot selection wanting to shorten the points out and already a little bit of a look to his box as well, wasn't it? That's a desperate isn't it, that one? Cheap points at this stage, always welcome. inside the baseline how gutsy Love is that pretty. but it was a defense that turned the point around and we've seen that a few times in this final set just how well he's actually been able to defend especially out of that backhand corner when you thought that Alfie Hewitt was in charge he's just turned the point around and as soon as he does he doesn't hesitate to get up the court onto the forehand Outs. <laughs> 15 Again really high quality strike and it seems so efficient and effortless from Gerard. With that, engineers a couple of break back points. It went two and a half hours. This one approaching that. Okay, Just over pressing a little, as many do against Five the return off. quality of Gerard. Hewitt yields. Gerard locks in to square the match at five games all. Got to give a lot of credit to the Belgian, though, don't you, in that game? just played the percentage tennis and we speak time and time again about whoever does the basics right and he just really went back to basics there put the ball in the court put Hewitt under pressure and unfortunately he crumbled tough to play against that. he does it time and again highly accurate very powerful very repeatable. Fifteen all. I thought it was going to be another one of those one-two punches. 
serve setting up the forehand this time. Just pushing it a fraction long. Breeze just picking up again, making it tricky for the server. selection again from Gerard. the knife sliced back out that stayed so low Back-to-back -back stunning games from Joachim Gerrard, who again turns the match his way and has the ascendancy. 6-5 deciding set now. So Alfie Hewitt will feel a little haunted by the fact that he was a set 3-1 up serving. Lost six games in a row, then in the deciding set serving at 3-2 and 5-4 denied by some brilliant returns from Gerard. He's found his best tennis when he's needed yes. to and when his back's been against the wall, hasn't it? He's just found some forehands, found some serves, just put the ball in the court and put the pressure on Alfie Hewitt and he just, I don't know, I just felt a little bit, like you said in that previous game, there was that element of panic, wasn't there? After that first point, you saw him already talking to his team as well and, you know, he's just only lost the first point. He just needs to try and think a little bit clearer and you just get a sense from that sort of 3-1 in the second right. set. He's just lost that ability to, to focus on what he's trying to do. And you sense that if the rankings were done on a grass court, then Gerard would be, would be one in the world with what, what he brings and all yeah, that he's absolutely. done on a grass court. Yeah, for sure, with what he's shown as well and the weapons that he possesses. So now, this is very important for Alfie Hewitt attempted to serve out the match at 5-4. He's now serving to stay in it at 5-6. Another buckling deep forehand return from Gerard. Really moving around the court, isn't he, with good energy, good presence. Just senses his opportunity here. who brings that extra muscular dimension to tennis. His weight of shot so heavy. Hewitt's been sort of facing an uphill battle throughout. And this is a tough watch for British fans right now. Enough 30 on the Hewitt serve. Strike, much needed. 15 30. those in this match. They could have just gone big down the middle. 
Yeah, so good at extending through the backhand return, isn't he? That time he kind of slid across it anxiously to hew it back to the comfort of 30 all. Ah, the net claims a rare error from the British number one. And with that, it's Joachim Gerrard with a championship point. And it's a fourth successive win on grass over Alfie Hewitt for the world number four, Joachim Gerrard, as he defends his cinch championship title. A second successive Queen's win, seeing off the world number two in some style. A 23rd win this season, a 48th singles career title. He comes through an awkward assignment with flying colours showing great depth of character today and resolve another big win he was a game from defeat at 4-5 in the third set it came through in the end 6-4 3-6 huge victory wasn't it and you could just see what it meant to him at the end and sort of grabbed it from the jaws of jaws of defeat there really didn't he and he just found a way and it was just that mental resilience in the end and probably just used a little bit of that knowledge that he'd beaten Hewitt three times already on grass and I think that's just got him over the finish line in the end again he's surprising stats with those first serve points one just down at 48 percent for the whole match and yeah the, those numbers he's going to want to improve for Wimbledon but look how close it was total points won by both players just two points in it at the end and just came down to the finest of margins like it does on the grass court and you've got to give so much credit to Gerard at the end there the way he sort of battened down the hatches from 5-4 down in that third set to turn it around and a lot for Alfie Hewitt to learn in that match moving forward to the next couple of weeks yeah that'll be a tough pill to swallow for Alfie Hewitt but uh, the 10 breaks of serve for Joachim Gerard from 15 break points so efficient there and uh, losing serve just eight times himself it's fittingly another great win for Joachim Gerrard and he'll be feeling great now heading towards SW19 with a Wimbledon title in his crosshairs no doubt the defending champion comes good again here so the presentation hardly assembles
Very uh, humble, gracious speech from our 2023 Cinch Championships men's wheelchair singles champion on the right there, Joachim Gerard, the second seed downing the top seed Alfie Hewitt. 4 6 6 3 7 5 in a real epic. Again, about uh, the two and a half hour mark, that one. So he's on form heading towards Wimbledon, as is Alfie Hewitt. A nice tune up there. And we'll be bringing you the men's doubles final up next. Will Hewitt and Reed be able to uh, avenge, avenge that defeat as they'll take on the second seeds, Gerard and Houdet, for the third time. With the belonging to this Belgian who defended his title, played some terrific tennis, particularly in the second and third sets. Well deserved on a very hot day here in West London. Well, it was a well deserved title, wasn't it? He played some. Terrific ten to turn that around. Four six six three seven five showed a lot of character, didn't he? There. Yeah, he did, and just that composure and that resilience that he has, and just under those moments of, of pressure, and you know, one game away from losing, <laughs> he just found a way to dig in, and he found his best tennis, and he takes so much confidence on the grass courts. He knows that he can turn it around, no matter what happens, and you just saw. Well, that's a prime example there today that he did that and you just saw how much it meant to him and he's got to be a clear favorite going into Wimbledon in a couple of weeks time yep the world number four looking good as the uh, players will head towards SW19 over the next couple of weeks they'll start to get their campaigns underway on the second Wednesday of Wimbledon but uh, for now momentary rest refuel and go again getting ready for the men's doubles so I'm sure shortly a graphic will flash up on your screen here to let you know exactly when that one will unfold it's now 245 in London I can't imagine them being on court much before 330 so uh, do keep an eye on your screen to inform you of when the men's doubles will be but uh, from Anna Smith and myself Paul Han don't go too far be back with more doubles action imminently.
Welcome back to our wheelchair men's doubles final. The world number one pairing of uh, Alfie Hewitt and Gordon as top seeds play the second seeds, Joachim Gerard and Stefan Houdet for the third time. Houdet and Gerard deliberate with their choice of ends, having won the coin toss. So the top two seeds going squaring off in this British grass court. Queen's Cinch Championships men's wheelchair doubles final. Hewitt and Reed against Houdet and Gerard. All hand and Anna to take you through this one. And of course, Alfie and Joachim needed uh, quite a considerable rest after their long singles encounter, which was uh, just pipped by Joachim Gerard. Four, six, six, three, seven, five. But Hopefully Alfie here fully refreshed, as is his Belgian opponent the other side of the net. Alfie uh, is ranked, that's his singles ranking there, but he's actually ranked one in the world in doubles. And his uh, man beside him, Gordon Reed, is number two. They've won 17 Grand Slam doubles titles together, which is uh, quite a coup. And four Wimbledon titles as well over the years. So they are, if you like, the team to beat. And that certainly, you would imagine, will excite Joachim Gerard and Stefan Houdet as we take a look at Gordon Reed, who himself has won uh, four more Grand Slam doubles titles because he won four before joining forces with Alfie. They've been playing together since 2013 and amass numerous titles aside from their huge in the biggest of tournaments around the world. 31 years of age, the left-handed Glaswegian, and here's Joachim Gerard, 34 years of age, of course the reigning and twice defending champion in singles with a fine win over Alfie Hewitt, as we mentioned, 7-5 in the third set, played so well to turn around the loss of that honor. He's ranked four in the world in doubles, is the Belgian has been up as high as three in the world back in the 17th of November 2014 but uh, always a force on a grass court whether it's singles doubles or whatever and uh, teaming up with Stefan Houdet along so Roland Garros 2014 champions uh, nine years or so ago so they've uh, history and I tell you what they will be keen to uh, scalp the best players in the world you'd imagine Houdet was part of the winning pair last year he teamed up with Alfie Hewitt incidentally and was uh, he's uh, one of the defending champions as is Alfie of course so uh, unusually splitting up this time but the Brits going their preferred pairing so all very close this wheelchair world and very high quality doubles hopefully will be entertained by Uday is uh, that's his singles ranking in doubles he's ranked 11th in the world man of vast experience, the 52-year-old, who's recently had a newborn. His partner was caught side during his singles over the last couple of days. Scotty Moore doubling up with duties today, having been in, chair, in the chair for all the singles matches. Well, he's, uh, keeping order over the doubles as well. Team Gerard, the side. So we're just about to get underway here. Paul Hand and Anna Smith to take you through. Should be a good one, this Anna. I'm looking forward to it. We saw a great singles just a little bit ago, and I'm sure Alfie Hewitt is going to be looking for a little bit of revenge out there. He came so close to winning that title, but it should be really good. Obviously, the Brits probably go into this as favourites, but. Gerard has got to have a lot of confidence from winning the title already today. Yeah, we mentioned it was the third meeting between them. They first uh, met these two pairs in, back in 2014 at uh, a French tournament in the final on an indoor hard court. And, uh, well, that by the Brits, Hewitt and Reed, 6-1, 6-4. 30 seconds. They were due to play. 
play in, last year at the Melbourne Wheelchair Open on Outdoor Hard in the final against uh, Huda and Gerard, but uh, Gordon Reed pulled out with a bad wrist. That's when he had the issues. But mercifully, he's fully fit now, pretty much, and he manages his uh, wrist very, very well ongoing. But he enjoys playing alongside Alfie. They're both such dear friends and so good together. Double. Doubles. Setting all records as well. So all lined up then for the men's wheelchair doubles final right now on court one. Hewitt and Reed, the top seeds, take on the second seeds in Gerard and Houdet imminently. Incidentally, we're mirroring the action on center court with the able-bodied game as well. Akaraz with the win over Diminor earlier today. And Taylor Fritz and Yuri Lehechka are in doubles action at the moment. Opposite uh, Ivan Dordig and Austin Krychek, the second seeds. The doubles draw. So this one, a slightly uh, tardy start because the singles players needed a rest. So here we go then. It's going to be Jochen Gerard to get this doubles final underway. Well, the speed and ferocity of these athletes is uh, supreme, and it was this that attracted me among many others to wheelchair tennis many years ago. Lovely touch there from the veteran Frenchman. 15 all. I think that might be a sign of things to come as well. It's for the fun of the wheelchair tennis game, the doubles, isn't it? As well, the, the amount of rallies and to see these guys covering inch, every inch of the grass court. Well, I think the Brits were arms aloft there, Gordon Reid. I think many, including us, expected a call there down the centre line. Umpire Scotty Moore having none of it, no overrule. Of course, that's. Joachim Gerard, First game. the Belgian. No surprises. The singles champion holds on to his opening service game. As they are quite happy to crack on with this. No time wasted, owls and drinks. So who's going to roll off with the trophy and all the pre-Wimbledon confidence with it in this men's doubles? Green to serve for the top seats. Gordon lost out 6 1 6 3 to Alfie Hewitt in the semi finals yesterday.
Oh, he loves that. And he's pulled one off. He tried several of those yesterday, did Stefan Hude. Mm -hmm. And I think about one in five was his ratio. <laughs> That's a beautiful backspun, undercut, uh, slice backhand. Didn't use as much height on that one like we saw. It was sort of 20 feet up in the air yesterday. He sort of cut that a little bit lower. Had the intended effect. Well, in post-match interview yesterday, with, uh, Gordon losing out to Alfie, he said, uh, this is one of the few tournaments we have won together. So it's a good challenge for us uh, looking ahead to Wimbledon. We want to be as best prepared as we can. So today, also an opportunity towards achieving that, with this uh, upcoming doubles in mind. And Alfie will be keen to uh, reassert himself out here. There's no doubt in that, having just uh, lost to Jim the singles. It was 3-2 serving in the third set, 5-4 serving for the match as well, Alfie. The turquoise, hopefully the disappointment uh, put behind him. He had similar fate against Cunyeda in the final of the uh, wheelchair singles was at Wimbledon last year, I remember. Unable to quite get across the line against Steam Japanese. You can have a little bit of scar tissue from matches like that, can't you? They tend to just stick in the back of your mind and Sometimes as tennis players, we're not very good at always remembering the positives. We do <laughs> tend to remember the losses and the scores and positions that we're in. So really important that he tries to put that to the back of his mind. Yeah, you're right, and right. I, I'm with you, particularly on like big occasions like that at Wimbledon and uh, Queens. They're they're tough scars to heal. Again, it's Gerard with the early backhand return, causing problems as he did so well throughout the tournament with singles effect. serve going the way of the uh, Franco-Belgian duo. You can feel and hear the wind rattling around on our on-court effects mic. It's Jared and Houdet that romp out to a two-love lead here. Houdet with his serve to come. I haven't quite got going, have they, the British pair? Gerard and Houdet are the ones that have really come out with the energy, looking to boss proceedings here in these early stages. <coughs> That's a lovely touch. Well, a really good improvisation there for Hewitt. 1530. And when you think they came in today uh, attempting to do the singles and doubles title sweep between them, yeah, it'll be a little bit of a flat start. You're right. <coughs> Good 
15, uh, Wind just catching that forehand a little bit, pulling it wide. Keenly, these two wheeling around with a couple of break back points here now. Wonderful touch from the 52 year old Frenchman. The wide backhand drop volley from the top draw. Look at this, advancing up the court nicely. Reads this so well. He's enjoying himself out, yes. isn't he? The Frenchman. He's really owning proceedings out here. He's been a standout player so far. Really showing off all his skills that he possesses. Been staring down the barrel at 15 40. The action roaring out here right now. Gerard and Hude, it's a high five between them. They've got all the momentum right now. They whiz off to a heady three love start in this opening set. Going their way. lady in between him and Gerard right now is looking at him fondly having a soft drink and she's keeping an eye on the little babe behind the racket bag of Gerard Uday is uh, welcoming his fifth child into the world recently he's got a couple of sets of twins as well Now then, these two deep in thought, yet to get any traction on the scoreboard. It's Alfie Hewitt to serve last in this rotation. Can he hold on? All of 
this is setting the tone for the Wimbledon upcoming in a couple of weeks for these guys. They'll start second Wednesday. times have we seen that so far already we've got to be at least four or five times it worked every single time it just seems to have found the balance on those drop shots picking them at the right moments and all the momentum here with the belgium french pairing Well, Hewitt and Reed so established. They've won 40 men's wheelchair doubles titles over the years. <laughs> 17 of them slams. That's just absolutely gorgeous. It's all falling the way of Gerard and Uday right now finding more and more gears to their game. Seeds working ever so hard, but with nothing tangible on the scoreboard at all. And now, the second seeds here in your picture have a couple more break points, this time on the Hewitt serve. What a start from them. so maybe more locally you can see in front of the pair in white the flag shadow fluttering on the court one break point saved by Alfie this is where sport Anna is just so humbling isn't it yeah it is you come so close to victory and you don't cross the line and and all of a sudden looking at a double break down here if Gerard and Huday get this point. Okay. Gerard Huday break four. serve again. And they are rampant. Four love they lead. And what a day for Alfie Hewitt, who was just two hours ago serving for the championships at 5-4 in the deciding set. It's that singles, and now he's staring down the barrel at love four in the doubles. It's often the way, though, isn't it, in doubles, where you can be playing well independently but not quite gelling together as a pair, and you know, you know how it is, Annie, you've played a lot of doubles. It's, it's really important that you both get your resources together simultaneously, and then the scoreboard starts moving. 
and certainly has happened for Gerard and Uday, that's for sure. Half the battle on the double court though is having the energy, isn't it, as a pair? If you didn't know what the score was, you know, you took away the scoreboard and, and just showed people the, the energy that these two pairs are bringing, it would be fairly obvious who was winning. We just need to find a way the British pair to up the levels a little bit. I know Alfie's tired, he had a long match, but he needs a little bit of help from Gordon. Yeah, but so did Joe as well, didn't he? Um, it's different though, when you've had a long match, you come out on the right side of it though, isn't it? You well suddenly find energy yeah. you didn't quite realise you had, and when you've slogged it out for two and a half hours and you just come on the losing side, all of a sudden you feel a bit more depleted in terms of energy. Sweetly put away oh, from a busy. very proactive Stefan Houdet. I'm not sure if he missed the ball yet. <laughs> I don't actually almost remember in these opening four games or so him missing one single shot. Nonsense from Gerard all day. Him and Houdet motoring on with that momentum built from the singles win as well. And the defending champion is at it again. Five love the second seeds dictating terms out here in this men's wheelchair doubles final. I was coming here this morning, Anna. I told you this story. I'll tell the viewers. Uh, we were in the courtesy car today, uh, yesterday, coming to the venue. And we were walking past this young lady who was running around, you know, like the joggers do, sort of near to Queens. And I said, oh, to the, the driver, I said, oh, there's one of those joggers that irritate you. They, they tend to run right around Queens as if they're players or former players, you know, and, and, and they're probably just also rounds. Uh, <laughs> the car got closer. We turned around and it was Daniela Hanchikova. <laughs> that <laughs> famous so also <laughs> That's right, absolutely. <laughs> former top tenor in singles on the WTA. <laughs> she was running around Bishop's Palace, of you that know it, in uh, near Queen's Club, a beautiful area. And there's a little uh, Charles Lido, and right down by the river there, lovely little spot. So, a lot of work to be done then by the top seeds here, who are going down hard in this opening set, still not on the scoreboard. Can Gordon Reed salvage some pride and hold on to his left-handed serve here? Love five.
Adams. And they're just missing by the smallest of margins, but it's just not helping their cause at all. And this will strip the top seeds of any confidence, you'd imagine. They're going to have to dig very deep into the vault of self-belief here to somehow find a way to turn this around. They've been under siege from the offing. If they can just get a game on the board, things can turn around quickly. A coach of mine always said it's not how you start a match, it's how you finish. And I think sometimes you've got to put these opening five games behind them and just start afresh now. Just uh, in a very awkward part of the court for Gerard to turn and make something of it. So game point then for the Brits. <laughs> Uncharacteristic mistakes, aren't they? You wouldn't normally think that Hewitt would miss that backhand but again when you're just sort of half a beat slow these are the errors that can creep into the game But then he's got another opportunity to come out and sort of rewrite those wrongs, doesn't he? Or you can kind of go into your shell a little bit, can't you? And, and get down on yourself. And hopefully he sees this as more of a challenge. Yeah, and it's a tournament they've never won before, these two, so... <coughs> Together anyway, Alfie won it with Stefan Houdet last year. Love he really really loved to win it with Gordon Reed. There's no doubting that. And if nothing else, just to give them some confidence moving into the All England Club, looming. <coughs> to the ring there with that drop shot just being a little bit more proactive the British pair that's what we're so used to seeing from them bringing that energy and that aggression and we just hadn't seen it in that opening five games it's a glorious change up from the very calm imposing Gerard Slice back and down the line. Struck so well.
man in terms of doubles on the planet 125 doubles titles to the Frenchman's name Yeah, the frustration there from Hewitt. I think that's a little bit of him just letting all the emotions of today so far out. And you can understand why we've all been there. Set point for the second seat. Game and first set. Well, and you must say, a pretty flawless set from Gerard and Nude. Just a solitary game drop. They're giving their uh, counterparts a very wide berth in winning that opener. Six games to one. Well, we didn't anticipate that coming in here today, I must say, given the dominance of the top seeds throughout the, the year. Cue balls are out. And, uh, here are the numbers from the first set. I think it's a pretty flawless set of tennis from Gerard and Hude from start to finish. They were the, the dominant pairing and if you just look at that number in that left hand column, Hewitt and Reed, 0% of second serve points won. Unbelievable stats and they've got to turn that around because they just weren't winning enough points behind the first serve either as well. You've got to be a little bit more dominant and again created a couple of a couple of chances but just weren't clinical enough and it just feels as if they were just flat they just didn't come out really with any any energy and, and sort of how you start the match sets a precedent doesn't it it's really hard to sort of find a switch and just turn it on and they've almost got to forget that that first set happened and, and find a way to come out with energy in the second set and just really show the Hewitt and Reed that that we all know and have come accustomed to. Yeah, uh, I agree. Slightly flat performance, and I think the second serve points won at zero suggest basically that when they go mid rally as well, they were relatively effective. I mean, we always talk about the Gerard return of serve. We know that standout. We had evidence of that a few hours ago, didn't we? But mid rally, you know, in, in those sort of neutral situations, there was just not enough happening from them, was there? They've got to up the intensity. You're absolutely bang on. And uh, it starts now. I think Hude for me was a, one of the, the almost a standout player on the court as well. It, he, that was the most dominant I've seen him hit the ball as well. And you know we all know that he has that variety. But this time he found the balance between stepping in and ripping some forehands when he needed to. But then also that silky smooth drop shot that he had. And again, I don't think I remember him missing one of those. Yeah, I think he complements really well with Gerard as well because Gerard brings the power, the burliness, and Stefan's so good with the touch, the feel. So here we go then, start a set number two, Alf Hewitt, with the new balls.
15 all. Thirty fifty. Well, I think there's a little hesitancy there, lack of call perhaps that the uh, second seeds thought the serve might have been out. there got behind him didn't Alfie Hewitt normally so fine with those forehand drive volleys but timing a little off there good work from Houdet asking the extra question got to get stuck in right here the top seeds in Hewitt and Reed. if these guys break they've looked pretty uh, mercenary throughout this match so far opening a few service games for the British pair are really important. They just sort of need to stem the tide a little bit. Can they just focus on their service games? Just get to maybe three all in their second set. Then you never know what can happen. You can hear their team just trying to cheat themselves up. Really good game. Very important game for them. They're on the board earlier in set number two. And that bodes well in terms of possible comeback. And of course, Alfie Hewitt's all about scuttling, scampering, intensity. That's what we said in the singles, didn't we? And when he's not really putting in that sort of effort, it, it, it's hard for him because that's kind of his calling card. So Houdet is ready to roll. Such pace and accuracy from Gerard, and so smoothly taken. The flick of the wrist, isn't it? Almost, you just look here. There's not much backswing, and all of a sudden, just wraps the racket around the outside of the ball, finds that width. <coughs> Thirty miles. at it again the backhand I, I tell you what as good as the forehand is I think the backhand's more of a strength you know from Gerard we've seen boundless winners off that wing who they holds to love and uh, square the second set these two keeping the pressure on Yep. 
15 on. Well, the longest rally of the match for sure, and Alfie Hewitt a little upset with the unforced error at the end of it, but what yeah, good tennis for all four men. The hard part for the British pair, though, is that they're not getting any free points, are they, from Gerard and Houdet? They're making them work so hard for each and every single point that they're winning. Well, another mesmerizing rally, and again, it's the second seeds coming out on top. this time on the reed serve as they did in the very first game of the match where they broke Gordon more opportunity here Yeah. 
A little unhappy at the concession of his own serve there with the double fault. But it's the blur in all white, the duo that have really brought it this afternoon. These two, a set and 2-1 up now. today this London venue Hude alongside bringing it as well they just seem to be enjoying themselves though don't they as a pair yeah, and they've also sped on with it pretty quickly as well they've been no nonsense they've been getting on the out of the change of ends very fast I was trying to jump the Brits quickly Spin a lot off the Love forehand from Alfie Hewitt. That's more like it. A little bit of creativity required. Maybe they do need a little bit of a change of tactic. Maybe look to come forward a little bit more, throw in a few of the higher balls, because whatever they seem to be doing at the moment, if they're trying to rally with the pair of Gerard and Hude, it's just not fruitful at the moment. Forcing play again from Gerard, Eighteen, just uh, bisecting the Brits with a really tasty knife slice, cutting through the court so quickly. This one, perfectly placed at good length. <coughs> well, they thought about Brilliant. wriggling over that ball, just uh, teetering on the net cord for a while. Did get a couple of net cords in the singles, didn't he? Maybe he's used up all his luck. Yeah, he certainly had several lives today, Jochen Gerard. Again, exquisitely done from the 
twice singles champion here. Gerard Houdet lead three games to one. Gerard and Houdet pulling away in the second set from the top seeds now. I can't recount the last time I saw Hewitt and Reed going down this hard so fast in the match. It's finding it really difficult to get any serious traction. I think the good thing with the scoring format, the way it is in doubles, is that even if they're set and 3-1 down, all they've got to do is find a way to get through this set, and it's a match tiebreak to 10, so mentally it's a little bit less demanding than if they had to win three full sets. Yeah, it's a good point. If they can just somehow steal the second, then they've just got a tiebreak to go. I like Alfie's, it. Yeah, Alfie's just got to think about how the match turned around earlier. I know it didn't go in his favour, but it's just so quickly these momentum shifts that can happen in tennis. These two, there's no doubting their skill if they can get it together. If they can just string a sort of five, ten minute period together where they're just able to bring up the intensity, bring a little bit more intent to their play. You know, they're still really in this, especially if they can hold comfortably. Oh, wonderful Ridley. serve. Spike down the tee from Alfie Hewitt. Today, and they knocked a pretty lopsided game there. That'll boost the confidence a little. But they still are trailing a set and a breakout. The LTA are hosting five one-day indoor events across the, the country again this year to uh, help open up the sport to more people. And if you want to get involved, do go to the National Tennis Centre on the 26th of August in London, 10th of September, Chesterfield LTC. Sunday, the 17th of September, we're at Oxstall Sports Park in Gloucester. Saturday, the 23rd of September, Kingsley Tennis Centre in Borden in Hampshire. October, a date to be confirmed at Eastern Tennis Centre on the East Coast, Norwich. You don't even need a chair or a racket. Just get along to one of those events and enjoy yourself. If you're 14 Time. years or older or aspire to be a champion, please get in touch with the LTA and they want to support your wheelchair tennis journey. You can email disabilitytennis at lta.org.uk. LTA be pleased to hear from you. Love 30. <coughs> these little chances, and these little openings are the ones they have to take, though. Love 30, get a look at her. It's just been one of those uh, days, hasn't it? Yeah. Everything has just gone slipping through their fingertips. Yeah. 
Hude with some on. wondrous touch as well, and he's complementing the big power game of the burly Belgian alongside. He's done his job really well so far. Surf did just look a little wide to be honest. I don't think there was a call, but it certainly was wide to me. Uday looking momentarily perplexed. Break back point here. Deuce been the story of the day hasn't it for the British pair so close yet so far just most crucial moments making those errors Break the Houday serve and start three the comeback, you sense. All. Locking in at three games all. A couple of wonderful hats there, just to the right of Alfie Hewitt, just trying to <laughs> catch a glimpse of the view. You see all sorts around Queens this time of year, don't you? It's great. Got a lot of people watching here, and especially in this sun, everyone's bringing out a different hat. Great to see, adding a little bit of colour. Yeah, that would be suitable at Ascot, wouldn't it? Those two. I was actually going to say, they look more dressed for Ascot than they do for Queens. Straining every sinew to get up to the drop shot, Alfie Hewitt, but unable to do any more thereafter. from the shot, better aggression, forcing Gerard to stretch up that backhand and he couldn't get any depth on the ball. So Gordon Reid served that they have struggled on the British pair, going to get a confidence boosting hold. Now is the tide turning right here? I said 10 minutes ago, didn't I, that they just needed to find a, a little patch of good tennis where either they improved or Gerard and Houdet just dropped off a fraction and all of a sudden the complexion of this match is looking completely different.
Always landed plum on the line, and that there really is synonymous with a lot of what we've seen today, isn't it? Just uh, you know, these two finding lines and finding those subtle little edges that when you're on, it really does help. And the British duo unable to really muster a great deep arc. So Gordon Reed again under siege here. and then from Alfie Hewitt Jeez. coming to the rescue. Had a bit of a groan of frustration there from Gerard. I'm sure he wants to get this done as soon as possible. He knows how dangerous the British pair can be when they do get ahead of steam. And look at what it means to them. Hude and Gerard roaring with delight. They break the, the uh, read serve. Uh, push out to a set and 4 3 lead now. That, a real sea change again in their favour. Not quite sure how they managed to win that last point. Gerard was pretty much in the fence, wasn't he? Alfie had that forehand on top of the net, just looked like he overran it a little bit, didn't quite get as much on it, but they're just scrapping, aren't they? It's not only the, the great aggressive tennis, but they're just making ball after ball and just putting the pressure on Hewitt and Reed in every aspect. Yeah, you sense they knew there'd be a fight back at some stage, inevitably, by the world number one pairing. They are just so good, but they've weathered the storm effectively as have uh, the partner of Stefan Houdet courtside who's managed to keep the baby quiet commendably so she's doing her job really well as well time Real. so Joachim Gerard twice singles champion here serving at a set 4-3 now. Two games away. Oh, 
beautiful from Alfie Hewitt, who could have thrashed that ball earlier away past two day, but was very sporting to just lob him. Lob him However, he made amends here, thrashed this down the line. How good was that get though at the net? Houdet did so well, and again he used one of those sand wedges he pulled out of the bag, didn't he? Too good from Gordon. Lovely touch from the left hander. Love 30. They're not done with this scrap just yet. Brilliant from Gordon Reid. Cutting Love off the options of his opposing team at the net so nicely there. And now a break back point. Well, it's great points. energy from the top seeds again. They're really trying everything they can to kickstart their campaign. Gordon there just missing that final forehand along. So one of the three break points saved. Big serve there from Gerard as well. Last chance here for the British pair. Can Gerard find another big serve or can the British pair come up with something? Oh yes, a beauty from Alfie Hewitt. Slid through the four games all. French court really quickly there and they lock in at four games all. This one's still so difficult to call, where moments ago it looked lopsided. And the Brits reasserting themselves. A wonderful kick serve wide from Hewitt. Thank you. 
So clever there from Gordon Reed. All of a sudden, he's becoming a bit more of a presence, isn't he, in these last couple of games? Just finding that touch, holding it really nicely, just going back behind Houday. Yes, Alfie Hewitt has New raised the bar. A couple of aces in that service hole. And having been 3-4 down, suddenly it swivels in their favour this second set. They're now 5-4 ahead with successive games notched. Things really looking up for the top seeds. I heard the announcement on the um, centre court that I, th I think the main ATP doubles final has gone to a deciding match tiebreak, and well, we might well be Time. heading for the same here. That's the format we're using. So for Hewitt and Reed, well, they'll be delighted to turn this one around. They've now in the ascendancy in this second set. Hude to uh, wheel up to the line to attempt to stay in it now, 4-5. <coughs> Taking no prisoners there, was he? Evasive action, having to be taken by Gordon Reed. on the high forehand there from Houday, not easy, but he does sit pretty high in his chair, giving him that added advantage. <coughs> intensity again haven't they Gerard and Houdet they really don't want to take the risk of having to hopefully get through a match tiebreak they want it done and dusted in straight sets <coughs> okay. that's a fine game to love five games all. so locking us in at five games all now then tension rising in the second set a must win set for the British pair He's been standout today, this man, hasn't he? Taking it all in his stride, really easy. Sweet timing, lots of power. It's troublesome on a grass court, as always. Sweet strike.
39. Almost had too much time around that ball. I think just closed his eyes and wishes he had that again and just didn't need to go that close to the line, did he? He'd done all the hard work, had the whole tram line pretty much to aim for. Just tried to be a little bit too precise. Good sleep tonight, Wally. Gerard, no doubting that after all they've been through. They've been on court now for the best part of four hours or so. Maybe more. And the hottest day as well yeah. this week so far. 30 degrees locally in London. It's a really good hold. Two and three leading six games to five. Just in the nick of time. And when you consider the Brits were set 2 3 down, they've done really well to swing this set around. Now leading, they've ensured themselves at least a tie break here. Just uh, half the court or so shrouded in shade. Shade, very welcome for Hugh and Reed, you'd imagine. Time. Jacques and Gerard to uh, serve at five six. Can he take his pair into a second set breaker? Fifteen. Want that back again. But those are the kind of returns that it's a second service sat right in the middle of the box. I wouldn't see Gordon hit over it, go after it a little bit more rather than looking to chip it back.
beautiful power angle off the forehand wing from the world number one points. doubles player. And with that, they've got a couple of set points now on the Gerard serve. A couple of double faults that game from Joachim Gerrard and it hands the set to Hewitt and Reed. They are very much back in this fight. So they take the set by seven games to five and we're going to be treated to a match tiebreak. A race to ten to pull these two pairs apart. A lot of credit goes to the British pair though. They were able to stick in their fight away all the way through weren't they it was looking a bit bleak sort of midway through that second set but again just the confidence they've had this the boundless titles that they've won just takes so much confidence from that don't they knowing that whatever situation they can turn it around and you look at those stats much better from the british pair wasn't it all of a sudden 41 percent of second serve points one and dropped for the French Belgian pair and just those double faults costing them as well especially in that last game from Joachim Gerrard and creating a lot more opportunities as well if you were and read and being a little bit more clinical and I think the key things are first serve percentage in this final set tie break you've got to be able to not give your opponents too many looks at second serves and you've got to try and go out and win this tie break can't you you can't wait and Hope your opponents are going to make errors. So who's going to be right. the most aggressive? Who's going to be the one to really try and dominate this breaker? Yeah, will it be a comeback win for these two? Who really did bring the intensity later on in that second set. That was a good effort from them because they came out quite Best tired. Average, particularly Alfie, who possibly had too much. You just don't know what goes on behind the scenes. But now they're very much into this. And it's just a race to 10 points. He's going to make one last push for the title. One zero. Exactly the way you'd want to Here start a tiebreak, isn't it? Try and get an early few points on the board. Can they just get one of these service points on the Gerard serve? start from the top seats they're fist pumping right now good energy in the British camp half the battle in these breakers though is the energy isn't it if you can sort of fake it till you make it it makes such a difference serve there didn't stay up for long enough he's disappointed the roar of disapproval from the big man the singles champion furious what's been a plethora of double faults under pressure unusually so Hewitt and Reed with three love double mini break of serve advantage here can they back this up long way to go of course to 10 points much more so than a regular breaker to seven from Gordon Reid. Just a little bit of undercut on that backhand slice as well and it slid through past two day. 
Do it, Reed. Funny how things can turn around so quickly in amazing. tennis, isn't it? Yeah. They scrape through that second set and race to a four-love lead. They've got a double break already. That is just gorgeous from Joachim Gerrard. Very calm Four, one. and composed Three. there to get on the board in this match tie break. We saw that a lot from this pair, didn't we, in the first set, especially especially from this man in your picture, Hude. Didn't see it quite so much in the second set. Maybe they need to go back <coughs> to that play. <coughs> a moment of wonderful touch from Gordon Reed. Something very special there. Five one. You and me. It's a four point buffer for the top seeds now. Who'd have thought that 30 minutes or so ago where they looked rather flat. They've really done well to elevate their levels of intensity. Deep seated belief. 17 Grand Slam titles between them. Together I should say digging deep here just think of the confidence that that gives you yeah. as a pair you just have that fundamental belief that whatever the situation is you can turn it around and they've really shown that they've been so resilient they took a battering in that first set oh stunning from Alfie Hewitt getting up there so quickly with that Massively strong Six first one. push. You and me. So many options around this here. Given that he got there quickly, wonderfully taken. Such poise and balance on arrival. Another moment of magic from the left-handed Scotsman. Seven one. You and Reed. Really come alive in this tie break, Kazani Gordon Reed. Just showing off all of the shots. Did so well. He's pretty much out of camera when he got that backhand back, and then to be able to just find that lob, there was not much space behind the big Belgian, but he found it. Business like roars from Hewitt and Reed. They're really.
really enjoying their tennis right now. Picked it right up from probably what was about a one or a two out of ten start from then in, in all honesty in that opening set that they lost 6-1. Great comeback here. Two points from victory now. Racket. You wouldn't have been surprised with the way he's playing in this tiebreak if he'd have found a way to make it, but Gerard Houdet just clinging on here. for the second seeds. Any more left in the tank from them? Surely they'll be buoyed by the fact they took that opening set. The loss of just a single game. They need to try and get both of these points on the Gordon Reed serve though, don't they? Can't be staring the barrel of a 9-3 or 9-4. long over the baseline nine three now that brings up Hewitt six Reed. championship points for Hewitt and Reed and you have to say given the start that they had that was so tepid this has been an incredible comeback One six seven five ten three. An amazing comeback win for Gordon Reed and Alfie Hewitt. They came today for the singles and doubles title sweep. They were denied that by Joachim Gerard, who took the singles title, but they managed to get a win today and snatch the doubles. A 41st doubles title together. And it's Hugh and Rizu, 1 6, 7 5, 10 3. They salute their fans and feel utterly relieved in getting across the line on what was a very shaky start. And they are uh, 2023 Cinch men's doubles champions in the wheelchair category. They can barely believe it. I think we can barely believe it either after that opening set. You just thought. Gerard and Hude, they were on fire, weren't they? They could do no wrong, and it really didn't look rosy for that pair in your picture, but the way they were just able to turn it around and just the determination and the fighting spirit that they showed, it 
can only give them so much confidence moving forward to Wimbledon in a couple of weeks. And the numbers picked up as the match went on, didn't it? Those second serve points, one went up, first serve points up as well. And again, you just look at that stat there. Houdet and Gerard won more points in the match than Hewitt and Reed. It's such a funny sport, isn't it? Yeah, it's wonderful, isn't it? The unique scoring system in tennis can allow that. But of course, it's all about the big points. And at the end of the day, after what was a very tepid start, they found a way. Played such a good match, didn't they? They'll feel a little wounded to lose that match, having had such a keen start. I think they can take a lot of positives, though, from that opening set. They did so much right, and that's the type of tennis that they really want to be looking forward to playing. for what might be the fifth Wimbledon title this year in a couple of weeks of SW19, these two. Let's hear from them now. Yeah, we respect these guys and keep it short so they, they get home tonight. But, uh, yeah, I just want to say uh, thanks to everybody for coming to watch. Uh, you created a great atmosphere for us out here. and uh, It's the first time myself and Alfie have, have won the title here and, and home soil, so we're, we're really happy with that. And, Obviously, it's great preparation for the tournament, and so hopefully we see some of you guys there as well. Happy to see you guys there. day of action all smiles the top seeds in the end with a brilliant comeback win over the second seeds today they dug deep and turned it round well in a match where they were taking the distance the world number one and two in men's wheelchair doubles coming good in the end and that concludes our Exciting action from final Sunday here at the Cinch Championships. Congratulations to the tournament Thank champions, you. Joachim Gerard in singles and uh, Hewitt and Reed in doubles. We'll leave you with some party pictures. Thanks for your company, viewers. Hope you enjoyed the action as much as we did. Thanks also to all of our LTA production team back and house. Now it's goodbye from Anna Smith and myself, Paul Hand. <laughs>